today we continue with our class um, <coughs> Woman's Guide to Practical Halacha. And we start with the Sefer Shmiras Halashon. And today's topic is um, key, to the, to, key to the Spiritual Success. And it says, Which man desires life, who loves days of, of seeing good, guard your tongue from evil and your lips from seeing, speaking deceit. And turn from evil, do good, seek peace, and pursue it. This is from Tehillim 34. Okay, so let's, before we continue, let's see what it says. Uh, one more time, which man desires life, right? Who loves days of his seeing good. So David Hamelach gives us very clear formula what to do in this life, right? If you want to see good in your life, that's, you have to stick to this formula. Guard your tongue from uh, from evil in the leap from speaking deceit. So basically, try to minimize uh, your um, uh, your conversation as, uh, about other people. If it's for a constructive purpose, if uh, for example uh, somebody needs help and you you personally cannot help, but you know somebody else who might might help uh, another person. Yeah, so you're allowed to to get that person uh, in enough information and see if, if that person is going to agree. Let's say if he's uh, or if he or she said, yeah, okay, yes, I'm willing to help, then you can uh, uh, give more information, right? But don't don't uh, don't share uh, like your problem uh, just with uh, random people. Continue, turn uh, turn turn from evil and do good. So that's a formula for Kirov, as we said many many times, and that's not not only for Kirov, how a person uh, sh should do teshuva and how a person must uh, progress in life. So you, you don't start from good, and then uh, you, you're hoping that evil is going to follow by itself. No, you stop doing evil and then do good. Okay, of, of, of course you can do it in parallel, but the stress on uh, stopping evil. Speak peace and pursue it. Okay, I mean, what, uh, don't, don't just uh, uh, give uh, good speeches, but uh, you have to actually live. Uh, by, by your speeches. Okay. I continue. The commentator explained that the term life refers to uh, that of the world to come, while days refers uh, to the men's uh, years in this world, which are only days comparing to entire life of the world, uh, of the next world. Um, so it starts uh, one, one more time, the rich man desires life, right? who loves days of seeing good, right? Days of seeing good meaning in this world and life in the world to come. Okay. So in the world to come, which is called life, right? Uh, starts with our working uh, or working very hard for it here in this world. Continue. Uh, we are uh, commanded to, to fulfill for uh, 613 mitzvahs. Uh, regarding all of them, Hashem said to us, See that I have placed before you today life and death, life, and which is good, and you should, and death and bad, right? And you should uh, love Hashem, your God, uh, to go in His ways and uh, observe my commandments. It's from Dvarim Thori in uh, verses 15 and 16. Right? So Hashem said, I. Uh, a place before you, uh, before you life, right? The meaning Hashem created us in this world to go in a good place, and that's what He wishes for us to do. And uh, everything we have to do is just uh, lo love Hashem, stick to His mitzvahs, and uh, and that's it. You go to the good place, right? And it's promise. Why then does David, in the above verse, said that the qu uh, quality of, of one's life in both worlds primarily depends on guarding one's tongue? In, uh, right? So it's a, it's a good question. So Hashem said, I place before you all of the 613 mitzvahs, right? And, uh, and, uh, and, and you have to choose. But David said, no, it's only, so only if you're going to guard your tongue, you're going to, to get the world to come. It's a good question, right? A little contradiction, looks like. In the opening passages of, the, uh, of this work, uh, we have uh, offered one answer to, to this question. 
below we offer more on this subject okay so what is the answer right so one, one more time what is the question when Dvarim says if you per, uh, Hashem said if you're going to perform all all my commandments right and uh, you, you're going to get in a good place but David Hamelach said uh, only if you guard your tongue uh, from evil you're going to go to get into a good place the answer from Hafez Chaim one of the answers in uh, preface to the Hafez Chaim we explain how the bitter sin of Losh and Hara can involve transgression of num uh, numerous positive and negative commandments to the degree that it's not found in any other sin Thus, Mirash Shmirash Halashon is the key to fulfillment of one's obligation both toward Hashem and toward his, uh, his fellow man. Uh, so, as we said many, many times uh, before, uh, <clears throat> so the, the most common uh, activity a person does during the day is speaking. Right? So, and uh, since it's very easy to sin, while speaking, so that's uh, that's uh, it, it becomes the most important mitzvah, right? So, for for example, uh, I don't know well, what would be other example. Uh, a person did not put tefillin. So, how, how many times a day? It's it's only once. That's it. He did not do tefillin once. But here, right, uh, every second, uh, I mean, every every minute, how many words of Lashon Hara person can say in one minute, right? And plus, uh, it depends. It's it's actually um, that, that's what we learn in our morning class. This introduction to to Chofetz Chaim. It's it's a different book, um, and it says so a person like theoretically. It, of course, it's only theoretically, but uh, can get to o almost twenty uh, sins, right? Uh, for for speaking one sentence of Lashon Chaim. Of course, it's uh, theoretically for all of this if uh, uh, fall fall in, into place. But even let's say even half of that. Even uh, tw uh, ten, ten cents or seven, just for one sentence. So now we understand how dangerous it is. And uh, we're talking about the positive and negative uh, commandments. Uh, when a person is careful not to speak disparagingly of his fellow or to embarrass him, uh, when uh, he demonstrates uh, caution in avoiding comments that can uh, aggravate, uh, aggravate dispute. And then he is careful to avoid transgression of the commandments uh, related to evil talk, both pa positive, positive and negative. Then he will surely avoid more uh, blatant, uh, blatant sins. Okay, so let's uh, read this again, and we go in because uh, he, he just leaves, but uh, there is a lot of uh, lot to say. Of course, we are going to try to keep it short, but let's do it one more time. And the person is careful not to speak disparagingly of his fellow. So many times, like all, all, all of these com comments, and, and I see in the Jewish world, non, non Jewish world, doesn't matter, like pointless comments. What is this guy? He's late again? Like, like why would you say that? Like, just mind your own business. You, you understand? Uh, so he, okay, he's late. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, I don't know, somebody's sick in his family. Maybe he has to go to work. Maybe this, maybe that. Okay, so he's late, right? And everybody's start giggling. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> he's late. You understand? So all, all of them, like, uh, all of this con conversation, first of all, like, most of them absolutely useless, right? Or to embarrass him. Or they, this guy came late and they, oh, where were you? And stuff, and everybody will turn their head. Where, where was he? Stuff like that. That's, uh, man, try, we try not to embarrass anybody. Um, and even if if we think that, that the person did something wrong, still like uh, it's it's only our suspicion. It was not proven, right? so don't try to embarrass. Like never embarrass anybody, unless it's a known rasha and he's going going against Hashem, heal Hashem in the presence. Yeah, that's uh, you're obligated to embarrass him and humiliate him. That's uh, for that's would be kiddush Hashem. But otherwise, it's like. Uh, uh, in the majority of the cases, uh, maybe 99% of the cases, it's not true. Uh, when he demonstrated caution in avoiding comments, especially on the internet, right, uh, avoiding comments, that can uh, aggravate dispute. So, for example, we, we, 
we post our videos on, on several platforms and, and some people they put so, so, such a stupid comments and I was uh, going um, over the comments and, and, and the person uh, who uh, who posted a comment and, and then I replied so he, he, he was trying to delete his comment. I mean, he, he deleted the, the, on that platform, you can actually can restore the account. Of course, I did not restore, I don't want to embarrass him, but uh, I, I left my reply in there, <laughs> just in case people want, uh, want to see my reply. Very interesting. And when he is careful to avoid transgression uh, or other commandments uh, related to evil talk, both in positive and negative, as we said. So it's, I, I think it's 21, if I remember correctly, it, it's 21 positive and negative transgressions. Then he will surely avoid the more blood and sins, right? Um, so all of the sins, like uh, it, it's like a snow cone, right? One sticks to, to another, as, uh, as, as, as we learned in Perkyovas. So we said one sin brings another. So what, what's the punishment for the sin? It's going to bring another sin. I mean, uh, Hashem is going to give that person opportunity to do next next thing. He won't accept upon himself the sc scrupulous, to scrupulously avoid causing harm or shame uh, through the spoken word. Surely he will not do uh, do through his action. So I mean, uh, one one cause uh, uh, one uh, one thing leads. So another, like, uh, for example, somebody told me today, somebody had argument at work and got a little uh, crazy out of hand. Person lost work. Like, why would, like, uh, they, they did it work? Like, uh, if you if you ask it, well, was it worth it? Like, to, to lose your job, now you're out of job, you cannot pay your rent. Is it, like, that, that's what you did? Okay. So, I mean, uh, but, um, uh, uh, like, it's, it's always co consequences. So we have to see, like, uh, we, we have to, like, uh, always know that Hashem is watching. Hashem is watching and uh, there, there would be con consequences. Thus, uh, one who um, ze uh, zealously refrain from speaking Lashon Hra will, uh, through such a self-discipline, come to fulfill the obligation toward his fellow. Okay, so we start. Any questions on what we said? Okay, no questions, no problems. So we continue. Um, uh, so last time, last time we were discussing uh, Friday night Kiddush. Uh, right, we, we discussed Lechem Mishnah, uh, two, two, two breads for Shabbos. And the uh, last, uh, last topic that we discussed, uh, we discussed washing dishes. Okay. So the next topic is uh, Shabbos Day Kiddush. Mm, the obligation. Uh, women are, ab are obligated in the mitzvah of Kiddush on Shabbos morning. This is because they are obligated in all commandments of Shabbos. Similar to men. So all of the positive commandments. Um, all of the positive commandments. Uh, because as uh, as we said uh, that Shamor Vezahor was was sent uh, set by Hashem said by, by Hashem in uh, in the same uh, sentence in uh, in the same time so that's how we we learned that the women are obligated in a time bound mitzvahs right so is is it Shabbos Kiddush uh, morning uh, day Kiddush Shabbos uh, time bound. I mean, the whole day, yes. I mean, in some sense, yes, it is time bound, yes. Okay. So, in this case, it's similar to men. This Kiddush is known Kiddush Rabba, <laughs> the great Kiddush. It was given the name because uh, the requirement to make Kiddush on Shabbos morning is only rabbinic, unlike uh, that of Friday night, when Kiddush is mandated by the Torah law. Thus, in order to lend more prominence, so the Shabbos morning Kiddush, it is called Kiddush Shabbat. So it's it's very interesting to just to, we're going to explain, but but the, just, just to draw the parallel. We, we were just speaking about not to embarrass another person, right? And here, uh, this uh, this Kiddush is only Rabbi. No, not only, but com compared to the Friday night is, uh, is a lesser statue, for sure, right? Friday night is a biblical, this is rabbinical, 
but in order not to embarrass this Kiddush, right? So Kiddush also looks like has feelings, right? So we call Kiddush Rab a great Kiddush. Uh, but on uh, on the Nazi hand, okay, that does not say here. But um, on the Nazi hand, why why is it called a great Kiddush? Because people usually tend to eat more, like a more more dishes because uh, right more, more than the Friday night. Is it always no? But um, many times. Continue the myth. So women are obligated, right? Also continue the mitzvah of the Kiddush on Shabbos morning is not as uh, to to sanctify day that was already done on Friday uh, on the night before. Rather, it is to honor day of Shabbos by st uh, starting meal with wine, which is not customary done, uh, done during the week. Right, so it's not about uh, sanctifying the day unless 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 unless. We miss Friday night Kiddush, so then uh, we say uh, the Friday night Kiddush on Shabbos day, right? We just skip the first paragraph because it not, does not apply, um, right? But uh, but otherwise, as, uh, as the author said, <clears throat> so we, we just uh, give honor to, to the Shabbos day and uh, usually not, not all people don't, don't drink wine uh, during the week. There's so much to do, like... <laughs> Uh, to, uh, so we don't drink wine d d during the week, but uh, but on Shabbos day, yes, that that's how we start. Of course, if person cannot drink wine, they can drink uh, juice, uh, like uh, grape juice or, or other things. Okay, so let's see. Next uh, topic is drinking wine. The primary component of the morning kiddush is bracha on wine. Uh, the psukim uh, recited before a uh, Ha Geffen, are not part of the actual Kiddush. Thus, the woman does not hear, if the woman does not hear uh, those Psukim, but hears only Bracha or Ha Geffen, she does not need to hear Kiddush again. Okay, so let, let's see. So, in, um, in a contrast, in a contrast to Friday night, as, uh, as we said, we, we have to sanctify day. Uh, the, the Shabbos is, is, is a holiday, right? So that's uh, we, we say all of the psukim before, um, before the I mean one one before uh, blessing on the one and one after, right? But here, technically, uh, the the only blessing we, we need to make technically, like the the bare minimum, is a blessing on wine. That's it. So, for example, a woman, uh, I don't know, whatever, she came late, she this, that, that, that doesn't matter what happened. So, she can make her own Kiddush, just blessing on wine, and start eating, and uh, basically that's enough. Or she came late for, uh, from, I don't know where, right? And she heard only the, the blessing on, on, uh, um, on, on wine, right? That's, that's enough. She does not need to hear any other things. But... Uh, about Friday night, just just to remind us, we said that if person miss any, any words in the first paragraph, by halu, right? Uh, so it's proper to 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 recite it during uh, during uh, the meal, right? O over the cup of wine, proper. If person did not do it, no problem, right? But here, no no such uh, thing. Um, a woman who makes a kiddush herself. Need only to recite Hagef and blessing, not other psukim. Okay, but uh, okay, okay, that, that, that's what they say. But uh, if woman wants to say more, then no, nobody is stopping the woman. So here we are talking the bottom line, like uh, with all of the discounts, the, the the bottom line, right? Okay, so if she is making uh, uh, kiddush herself, only blessing on wine, because the kiddush Shabbos morning is um, intended to show prominence to the day. By starting the meal with wine, there were those who maintained that everyone must drink from the Kiddush wine on Shabbos morning. Unlike the Kiddush of the Friday night, when it is not mandatory to all drink uh, from the Kiddush wine. Some family are particular to follow this opinion. Let's understand uh, and explain what, what it says here. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so, let's... Let's go back again. What what we said. So fr Friday night we sanctify the day. When we san sanctify the day, um, so only one person is obligated to, to to drink, 
right? He like if he can give somebody else to drink, or that they can split, for example, that they he, he cannot uh, drink so much for whatever reason, uh, they can split uh, among a few people. There is no problem, but um, but the, there is a, uh, but there is opinion that since uh, that's that's the only blessing on on like, uh, like uh, on on. on, on, on the, the Kiddush consists only one blessing. For example, if that, that's what they say, and it's proper to start the, the Kiddush with wine, that's the only like uh, reason we, we do this Kiddush, to, to, to show the respect to the day, so it's proper to, for everybody to drink. But actually, the, the way I like uh, that I saw, and that's what we conduct, so now family, uh, everybody drink Friday night and, um, and Shabbos day, but I, I would say, uh, when would it be practical? For example, if people don't have enough wine, and uh, I mean uh, that's that's possible, very very possible. So uh, you you try to uh, uh, divide, and uh, Friday night, for example, only person who says Kiddush uh, drinks the minimum, whatever minimum requirement, and uh, and on uh, Shabbos day uh, distribute like minimum minimum to everybody else. Mm. However, mo most poskim assume that the just on Friday night it is not obligatory for everybody to drink wine. So on Shabbos morning, so on Shabbos morning. However, it is uh, commendable to drink. Okay, so uh, one one more time. So if a person does not have wine or like uh, have limited amount of wine, perfectly fine to rely on this opinion. And uh, you just person who makes kiddush, let him or her drink. That's it. But otherwise, like uh, that, that's what I saw in, in uh, different families. Like uh, if wine is, is not a problem or, uh, or um, grape juice is not a problem, so everybody drink. Okay. Continue. Repeating the Kiddush. Many times a man or a woman uh, will hear Kiddush uh, away from her home, such as in a shul or in a simcha. When she comes home, uh, to begin her, her Shabbos meal, she must recite her Kiddush, uh, must she recite her Kiddush again? Was Kim right that although it is not required, it is good to do so? Um, once again, the reason uh, is that since the base, uh, the basis for Kiddush is to lend significance to the meal, it is uh, better to do so at one's own Shabbos Siddha. And not merely in Kiddush and Shum. So that's actually very, I think this is piece, I mean, the, the, the whole book, book is very practical, <laughs> don't take me wrong, but this is, uh, I think, a common place in uh, many shows. Okay, so what, uh, what he is saying, so for, for example, family or a woman, uh, like, uh, or a man alone, that doesn't matter. So. Uh, here, here we're talking about a woman. So a woman, right? So she's uh, she is in a show. A rabbi makes a kiddush, or whoever gabbai, whoever is uh, there makes a kiddush, right? And they eat a little, and then she go, goes home because usually the, this kiddush uh, in a shul it's not com like complete kiddush. It's just salads, uh, uh, some, some things, maybe maybe chomot, maybe this that, but uh, it's not complete kiddush. Um, right, so many people then go home after they, they, they socialize, right, and they, they go home and they, what they do, they eat, right, and now they're going to eat good food, whatever you prepare is always better. And, uh, and now, so, so he's saying it's proper, it is proper to, to say, to say, uh, um, to say your own Kiddush. So basically all, all of the Psukim that, that, that you say before that, just psukim from the Torah. It's not uh, there is none, no problem whatsoever, right? I mean, you you can say psukim from the Torah all all day long, right? And then you say bareprich geffen, right? Uh, blessing over over the the wine. Again, there is no problem whatsoever. So you you just want to drink wine. That's it. So of course it, it is called kiddush in this uh, in this sequence, but. Uh, it is very commendable for a person to do that. Just sanctify day one more time. Again, we're not doing anything illegal. Okay. Uh, can, uh, any questions on what we said? <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so then continue. Fulfill the mitzvah. To fulfill the mitzvah of Kiddush, uh, one must immediately eat something that, uh, that constitutes a seudah. This is called Kiddush bimakom Siuda, Kiddush in a Siudal's location. Some of scrupulous, uh, uh, sc uh, scrupulous to always serve a hamotzi food in their siuda. However, the halacha is that one may uh, have mizoinous food as well for a meal to be considered siuda. This means eating food that contains at least kizayas, one ounce of flour, within two, three, four minutes span. However, to satisfy the requirements of eating the day meal, once are required to eat bread later. Okay, so let's try to understand what it says here. Uh, actually, no, no that's uh, the, the whole uh, the end of the section. Let me finish one sentence. We explain from the beginning. Uh, if there is not possible, one may drink reviz, approximately 3.3 ounces, or wine or grape juice, and that considers soda. Okay. So what, what does it mean? Okay, so in in order for for a person to do it like um, to do a kiddush that is uh, meaningful, uh, kiddush as as we said, the kiddush the blessing that uh, that we say on wine before the meal is actually must follow by the meal. If if there is no meal, this uh, this uh, kiddush is useless. We said that, that this kiddush is attached to the meal, right? So what does it mean? So uh, right after Kiddush, right in that place, and uh, if you went to a different place, that is a problem. We're not going to go all of the details, uh, what problem or how to fix the problem. And okay, you when when wherever you're doing Kiddush, you must have food that you're going to eat, right? So it's uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the the proper level is to is to have um, uh, hamotzi food. Meaning that you in, in a place where you did, did kiddush, you must eat bread. How much you must eat bread? Kizai. So it's uh, as we said, it's one ounce, twenty-eight grams approximately. So it's not, it's not much. It's like half a slice, right? That's uh, what would be proper. <clears throat> but but in in many, especially in the shuls, they they don't say the sort of bread because people. Okay, people are not going to stay like uh, for to, to wash their hands and their hands and on. For some people, it's too much bother and they would not not going to do it. Okay, so the another solution is that uh, that you serve uh, mizoinus. Mizoinus. What does it mean? Mizoinus. So cakes, right? Uh, cakes and cookies and stuff like that, right? And uh, and then uh, of course in, like of course you you must eat uh, this kizais again uh, this uh, one ounce and as we said before it's you have two three to four minutes to complete this kizais but it's it's not hard I mean unless person does not eat and does not like this food so otherwise there is no problem um, and of course and as, as as he said. So like um, maybe like uh, well, when you're in a shul, uh, you complete this kizais, but this kizais is very very proper since it's only one kizais, so it uh, kizais be of a, of a flower, so fly, it's not a kizais of a cake. Even after the fact, so the 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 minhag the, the the tradition is that even uh, like uh, kizais of cakes is also good like. It's, it's only after the fact what, what I mean because well, when you look at the cake it's not only it's not only flour in there right if it's you have kizais of the cake you have uh, water there you have eggs there you have sugar there like uh, some filling uh, whatever you have some cream on top whatever you have so so it's not it's not exactly kizais right so so the proper to eat uh, one kizais of flour Okay, so it would be, I don't know, you, you can estimate maybe one, one and a half time, like uh, maybe one and a half kizais, two, two kizais of uh, an end product. It depends on a cake or depends on the cookies, of course. Right, but he said, uh, of course, it is proper, proper, proper to eat the bread later. So if you, so what, that, that's what uh, people do in many shuls and uh, they, they serve cake. They do, uh, Rabbi does uh, kiddush, they, they serve cake. People eat cake, cookies, whatever they serve, and then they go home, and then they do kiddush one more time, 
and then they're going to eat bread. Um, but is, uh, there is a third possibility. So we're going from top to bottom. So top is, uh, is a bread, second is misoinous, and the third is um, the third is uh, wine. So and um, uh, I would say just say that, that wine, right, grape wine, have uh, have this um, quality of satiating a person, right? So so in some sense, if like if a person drinks this rivi. Revi is the minimum requirement. Um, it's 3.3 .3 ounces. It's in grams. If somebody going grams, it's approximately 100 grams, like a little less than 100 grams. Um, and uh, and it would consider as as a person actually ate ate in double quotes in that place. So it would be considered as he did kiddush uh, b'makom siuda. Okay, it's very interesting. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So technically, technically, just the bottom line, right? The bottom line. So if person does not want to drink a lot of wine, uh, so technically, a person who does kiddush can drink um, uh, amount of uh, after finishing kiddush mlolugmav, the amount uh, that uh, feels uh, like uh, cheek full. We said it's approximately half of the uh, uh, reviews. So over like 1.7 approximately, 1.7 ounces, right? And then, like after done, so do this 3.3 ounces. And it's going to count as a person ate, ate in double quote, of course, because the person drank in that place. Okay. Any questions on what we said? <clears throat> but, but in general, in general, so like we must plan. We, we, we cannot just just start doing uh, this kiddush spontaneously. We, we need to prepare food, and we're going to eat in this specific place, right? And uh, so we're, and we're going to do kiddush in here. Okay. Next topic: eating uh, eating is forbidden before kiddush. It is forbidden for a woman to eat before kiddush, both on Friday night and Shabbos morning. Once a woman has davened on Shabbos morning, she may not even drink water before Kiddush. Before one has davened, she may drink water, which includes coffee and tea, even if it's milk and sugar. <laughs> I'm going to explain about milk and sugar now. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so te technically, as, as soon as, as, uh, as a mitzvah of Kiddush arrives, so we're not allowed to to eat or drink. So it's actually we're talking about woman here, but of course, uh, as we understand, for men it's uh, much stricter, right? Uh, so before, like when uh, when the time comes, right after night for nightfall, right to the kiddush or early or whatever they, they want to do kiddush. So right after they they accepted Shabbos. Upon themselves, let, let's put let, let's make it simple, right? They uh, they have right right now they have obligation right away they have obligation to do kiddush, right? And they're not allowed to eat or drink before they do that. Uh, so, but uh, on Shabbos morning it's a little different. So even though in our kids Shulchanor class we said that a person is not allowed to to eat or drink before the davening, right? But uh, we said if person needs to water because he's uh, thirsty or something, yeah, there is no problem with water. And uh, whatever is going to help him or her with concentration, meaning what? So you need uh, like, uh, to, to, to drink some coffee or tea. So of course it's not for, uh, for any other reasons, but, uh, but to concentrate better on the prayer. So you're allowed. So before prayers, you're allowed to drink these things. And uh, he said in parentheses, even with milk and coffee, because in uh, Shulchan Aruch said no milk, no coffee. Because uh, look, he said, if, if you need uh, caffeine, okay, you, you got it in, in the coffee, well, what in sugar? Sugar, it's like uh, you already start enjoying, and if you add milk, you enjoy even more. So that's, uh, that's not the purpose. If you say you need the caffeine, okay, that's, uh, you, you can get caffeine. Why you ask for all of the luxuries? Basically, but uh, late, later authorities they say Mishnah Brura comments also, so they say okay, if if a person cannot drink coffee without sugar, 
like or without uh, milk so let him drink in uh, with the milk and sugar and before davening okay continue right but after um uh, finish davening so as uh, as we said men have uh, like specific time right so well, he goes to shul or he davens at home or whatever times like uh, the, the, as, as early as possible woman is not uh, is not uh, like bind by time so she can do it a little later there is no problem she can start preparing for the for the meal this and that and only after that she can down there is no problem there is no no problem whatsoever but uh, uh, so before she downs she can eat but after she downs she cannot eat or drink until after kiddush Mm, same, same, same halacha with men. Okay, one must keep uh, this in mind. Even uh, eating at the kiddush in shul or in uh, someone's home, the requirements of kiddush bimakom siuda requires food uh, that qualifies as siuda. One who eats foods that does not qualify as siuda has uh, has eaten before fulfilling the mitzvah of kiddush. One who wants to eat um, eat at Kiddush must be sure to eat Kizai, so Mizoinus food, a, a quality of Siuda. So let's uh, try to understand. So it's a very, very important point, and um, I think many, many people are missing this point. Very interesting. So one more time. One must keep in mind uh, when eating at Kiddush in a shul or in someone's home right um that uh, you are what, what what keep in mind what that you are you're forbidden to eat or drink before you, you say in kiddush right and kiddush is only when you uh drink this uh what is it um, ep, uh, um grape wine or grape juice or whatever you drank and um and you ate right bread or you ate mizone so if you did not uh, eat bread or in or or uh, misogynist, for example, you ate salad, you ate fish, whatever you ate, you meat, right? Whatever you ate, so it's it's not considered to be meal. That's very interesting, right? So it it so this meal, right? The, this chicken, whatever a person is eating chicken, so it's considered like as he eats before kiddush. So the, this kiddush, whatever he did on over the cup of wine, it's not counted as a kiddush. That's. Uh, that's very interesting. So it says, so let me read. Uh, the requirement of Kiddush Bimakom Siuda, so Kiddush in a place where you're going to eat, requires food as qualified as uh, Siuda. So not every food, as, as we just said, qualifies Siuda. It's not. Uh, one who eats food that does not qualify as Siuda has eaten before fulfilling the mitzvah of Kiddush. That's it. So it's... Uh, so you you think you you're doing a great mitzvah to eating your kid your chicken, actually not. Actually, this chicken is forbidden to eat, right? So right, one who wants to eat kiddush must be sure to eat kizayas of mizoinous food uh, that qualified as silda. So so I mean in, uh, this cookie or cakes or whatever we eat. So but of course it's proper to eat bread. That's uh, the most the most uh, like proper way of doing the mitzvah not not cookies not uh, not cakes okay continue any questions on what we said okay so if not continue so next topic so we we continue with shabbos of course so shabbos day meal Let me just one second to check something um okay shabbos day meal the requirement to eat before chatzos that's uh, especially in the winter that's very very applicable so listen to this it is prohibited to fast on Shabbos it is forbidden to fast intentionally on Shabbos even for a short amount of time however even without the intention of fasting if one does not eat until after six halakhic hours into the day then it is as if person is fasting which is forbidden so let's try to understand. So on uh, <clears throat> on Shabbos we are not allowed to fast. There is there is some some days. So we, when uh, when uh, um, like 
the, there is some circumstances uh, like when one person wants wants to fast, right? So he had a bad dream or something is going on. Your side of a parent, okay, or some personal fast, right? But on Shabbos you're not uh, you're not allowed to fast unless it's a terrible terrible dream, right? Um, and uh, and it's, it says very very interestingly you you did uh, uh, intentionally or not intentionally. So if time comes, right? If time comes, uh, like after six hours, so it's uh, six seasonal hours. So today I'm not sure what is it. Um, uh, in my time, I think it's around twelve. It's around noon plus minus maybe um, I'm not sure. Like uh, like noon. Regular, right? No. So mean, meaning what? That uh, <laughs> that you have to like finish praying, like uh, uh, before that time, right? And even uh, even in even let, let's say man is still in the shul, and it's one one of the re reasons when you you allowed to continue fasting because you you are busy busy meat, so you continue praying. But your family, guess what? Your family are not doing any meat, so they they're waiting for you. That's the problem. So it looks like the family is fasting. So all of these places, all of the lazy people who start like I am, Shachar is not, nine nine forty five. They're the clowns. They start like 10, 10 a.m. Okay. Uh, so of course the the family is uh, fasting. So even though he's uh, he's um, uh, he's praying and he's absolved from uh, like uh, from from do, doing kiddushah now, but but the whole family is fasting. That's a problem. So you wanted, you did not want. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. Many times one uh, can uh, predict that the meal will not begin until after that time. In such a case, one should drink water before she davens uh, or make a douche and eat mizoinas after she davens. Avoiding this prohibition, so that's uh, the solution for a woman, right? So she has your kids, she by, by herself. That doesn't matter, right? So again, the there is no problem with a man because he he's in the show, right? He's uh, he's praying, they're reading Torah, the I don't know, he's singing, he's I don't know, hopefully not, not socializing in front of the show when the family is waiting. I hope so, right? Uh, um, so, but, but the woman, when she sees uh, the husband is not there, and uh, for whatever reason, so she it's proper for her to do her own kiddush, right? Or, uh, or, um, or at least, as as they say, it's it's not a solution that it's going to work for a woman, right? Uh, she can uh, drink before before she dances. So in this case, she's not fasting. Okay. Or to do your own uh, own kiddush, and that that's uh, that's what we tell women, right? Of if if he's not there, this uh, this husband of yours is not there, so and, and kids are hungry. Of course, he kids can eat like after, under the age of bar mitzvah, there is no problem; they they can eat, right? But uh, older kids are hungry. That's that's the issue, right? They they want to eat, so she can do a kiddush for them and uh, let them eat a little. Of course, mizones, as we said. Okay. Uh, so one more time. In in, in this case, uh, one should drink water before she davens, or uh, make a douche and eat mizoinas after she has davened. Okay, avoiding this prohibition. Continue. Even if one has already had something to eat or drink. So so basically, if you if you have a choice, do not go to to this minyan. And, uh, before you, you 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 decided to relocate something, so like uh, um, you have to find out what kind of community is it, right? Are they kosher, uh, semi-kosher, and all this uh, all these uh, things are very very important to know. Are they are they yeshivas? Are they kosher stores? Are they uh, what time they start on Shabbos day in the morning? Okay, continue. Even if one has already had something to eat or drink, it is still preferable to begin a Shabbos day meal before six halachic hours into the day, which is uh, uh, referred to chatzos. So chatzos is like midday or midnight. Midnight. It's half, right? Okay. Okay. So 
it's proper anyway and that that's what we're trying to do and in in some shoes um near me they um they they um pray like slower right and then after shakris they go home do the kiddush for uh, because ev everybody lives uh, like uh, around right so they, they go home to do the do the kiddush for their own families and like 45 minutes uh, 35 minutes so they they back to shul and that's it they uh, they continue davening musa well, no nobody drank uh, so that that's why people usually do this kiddush on, on grape juice not on wine then after they come home yeah they do on wine but this one is uh, on a grape juice and uh, it's uh, to avoid this issue of uh, uh, fasting on shabbos or the, or they start earlier whatever they do okay. Especially in the winter, it, it, in summer there is no problem. It's like one one thirty sometimes. There's no problem whatsoever. Eating hot food uh, at the siuda. There is a mitzvah to eat hot food on Shabbos day meal. For skin speaks strongly against one who is able to eat something hot and does not do so, and they extol one who is careful, exalt, exalt. I'm sorry. Uh, one who careful to do so. It is therefore the custom in all Klal Israel to eat Cholent or Hamim uh, at the meal. Okay, so okay, so the it's proper. So why why do we um, why do we eat hot meal? Because that, that's what uh, people enjoy. They, they enjoy hot meal, something like not not cold cuts or uh, salad, right? Uh, hot meal. So in uh, the, the most popular foods, uh, here's a cholent. Uh, cholent is for Ashkenazim and uh, for uh, what is it, uh, for uh, Hasidim and uh, Hamim. Uh, Hamim is a uh, is a Sephardic food. I mean, the but same same uh, same same idea, right? Uh, all these uh, uh, beans that uh, that cook they take very very long time to cook and they be put in slow cooker and. Uh, and uh, that, that's what they do. In my family, we don't eat neither of them because it's very, very heavy food. Like you eat this stuff, it's very tasty and you go to sleep and you wake up next uh, next summer only, right? But if you want to learn Torah, that's, uh, you, you don't eat this heavy food. You, you can eat soup. So today we have slow cookers. We have a good slow, uh, slow cooker, right? So all this uh, fancy schmancy stuff and uh, that's it. So you, you can put soup Right, and it's going to be hot. It does not have to be this uh, heavy food. But if, if some, I mean, uh, they're, they're tasty. This hamim and chol are tasty, but uh, it, it put you to sleep. Uh, however, one who suffers pain by doing so, for example, for dietary reason, uh, is not required to eat hot foods uh, on Shabbos day, but should try to at least drink something hot. So that that's why, uh, like. Uh, in the summer, like when it's very, very hot, very, very humid, uh, like uh, people usually don't don't like to eat hot food, but at least, at least minimum of the minimum of the minimum, uh, like have a hot tea, like hot, hot coffee during during the meal, something, right? Okay. So today with all the slow cookers, it's a uh, like different world comparing to the olden days. Okay, continue. And uh, plus you have a hot tray. You can put on a hot tray or you, you can put on a black or if you if you want to use stove. So the, the difference between hot tray and, uh, and stove, so on stove you, you can have like a higher flame, like a m much more hotter than uh, on, on this uh, hot plate. So it's personal preference. Continue. Proper uh, t uh, proper topics for conversation. Uh, like a family must be mindful of the discussion that take uh, place on the, the Shabbat Seudah. The main focus should be the topics that uh, befit in the special time. Certainly, no forbidden speech should be uttered. So, in in order for uh, no no forbidden sh speech should be uttered, so it cannot just come spontaneously. Right, and you, you say to everybody, yeah, nobody should uh, speak uh, lo lotion or some derogatory statement about somebody. It's not going to work. 
so far, uh, so, right? So a person must be prepared. Whoever is in charge, is a woman in charge, man in charge, whatever, whoever is in charge, and they must prepare the Dvar Torah, right? The words of the Torah, and get get everybody involved. So we, we give uh, children assignment, right? Prepare Dvar Torah, whatever is it doesn't matter. And you, but you, as a adult, make sure that you, that you're listening and you ask questions, and then you get your children very interested. Your children, grandchildren. Right, very very interesting. So of course, the next time they're going to prepare a good monitor, right? And that, that that's how uh, kids develop the, the love for the Torah, so that they, they they get to speak. So they get to speak, and everybody's listening. And same as other people, like you have guests. So guests can uh, bring their own book, for example, uh, uh, like they they want to read you from from their favorite book, uh, Torah book, whatever it is it they they can read. Or you yourself, so some people cannot speak. Okay, it doesn't matter. So you, you cannot speak, but but still you can read in your own language or whatever you, you, you read. Uh, story of Tzadikim, some read, some like uh, to, to learn Halacha, some, uh, um, some people uh, read, and that's what I, I personally recommend people, that's what we do in our family. So we read the parasha one time at the meal, and uh, do like a quick uh, commentary, whatever commentary we didn't say last year, so we say this year. Of course, not all of the commentary is going to take forever, but uh, uh, but uh, just to honor somebody, of course, it's not right, just honor somebody that your family, so somebody, I don't know, whoever you want, get get per person involved, and everybody listening to the parasha, and uh, you, you can comment. Also, like, uh, here we go, like, I don't know, 30 minutes, uh, for 40 minutes, depends on parasha, right? It's very interesting. So, but uh, but one more, one more time, it, it cannot be done spontaneously, you have to prepare. So you buy, buy yourself books, and today there's so many books, of very many, many interesting books, like uh, this um, uh, Alain Le Shabayach of Rabbi Zilberstein, right? So, and it's, it's actually split, split by parasha, and uh, he, he's a greatest rabbi, he's still alive, right? Uh, he's on, uh, in Israel. And people came to him like with the craziest, unbelievable like uh, questions. So uh, unless it would be put in a book, so you say it's not possible. So and he collected, uh, or his students collected uh, many, many of these questions. Uh, he, they, he actually have several books uh, from several of them. Publishing, but this Elaine Al Shabeh is from uh, from Art Scroll. All right, and uh, it's a very very interesting story, very interesting question. Involve get involved, everybody involved. All right, so don't uh, don't speak Russian Haram. Um, okay, continue. Borer in the, in the uh, in uh, in table settings. That's very interesting. So Borer is uh, what is it? It's sorting, right? Separating. Women often come upon situation of Borer when setting table for Shabbos day meal. For example, if there is a mixture of silverware consisting of forks, spoons, and knives, sorting them on the table uh, in their proper place is an act of barrel. So we're not, um, we're not allowed, uh, as we said a long time ago, it was maybe a year, maybe more or more ago, in, uh, when we started this Shabbos class, I'm not sure maybe two years ago, right? So just, just to remind us, so we, we're not allowed to to, um, to separate bad from good. So whatever bad uh, is, whatever good is. So bad is something uh, not desirable and good something that is, is desirable, right? And it's, uh, you, uh, mostly we, we spoke in that class about the foods, Right, uh, but uh, sometimes it's applied even uh, not to the foods. Okay, so he he's a he's an example. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, this example for me does not make sense for, for me personally. Like, I mean, it's it, it is a classic example. But how is it possible on Friday night she would have? Uh... No, no, no. I apologize. Uh, okay, it's Shabbos day meal. Okay, Shabbos day meal. Let's say they wash the the, the silverware. Okay, that's uh, that's the example. So I apologize. So for Friday nights impossible. Like uh, like you you have a mess, 
from the from from uh, from the last week. Okay, but let's say they wash uh, the silverware and they like in one bunch, right? You put it in uh, some cup or wherever you put it, wherever you dry silverware, right? And now, so it is considered to be mixed, right? Um, and sorting them on the table in their proper place is an act of barrier. This would be permitted only if it's done for immediate use. Uh, uh, therefore, it is forbidden to set a table in a, uh, in a bare uh, fashion and then go to show, uh, since there is a considerable lapse of time between setting the table and using the silverware. A woman who wants to go to shul after setting the table should be careful to completely avoid the barrer action. Okay, I mean, I mean he, he said it in several uh, sentences, but... Uh, um, <laughs> so some things, uh, so, uh, the, the laws, uh, like I'm, I'm trying to, to do the, the, the summary because I think we spent like three or four classes or maybe more. Maybe your five even classes with Bore. So I'm trying to, to summarize. Uh, so you, you're allowed to do, uh, to, to sort, right? Uh, you, three things, right? Uh, three, you, you, you must do, do three steps, right? Three, three conditions, three conditions. So good from bad for immediate use and with a hand. Um, good from, from, from bad, for example, you have, um, cluster of grapes right and and when you bought it was nice and now now we see that uh, some of them are rotten right and they are in the table now the whole uh, the whole family is going to see uh, what, what you bought right so you're not allowed to separate these rotten uh, grapes right you're not allowed so you you are allowed only to take what is good and leave over whatever is not good uh, with your hand, meaning what? That you're not allowed uh, to use any special instrument, right? To, to to strain things, for example, right? To to separate things, not not allowed. Um, and for immediate use, meaning that you're going to eat right now. So I, I guess the the classic example would be um, to eat fish on Shabbos. So fish on Shabbos, of course. Uh, the problem is, uh, well, what is the problem with fish and chavas? So the fish, some uh, some fish has bones, and you're not allowed to separate bad. Well, well, what is bad? Bad is uh, is a bones from what? From good. Good is a fish, right? Uh, <laughs> but if it is for for immediate use, for the, or or it's dangerous, for example, you try to feed a little child, so he's not going to, she's not going to spit the bones. They're going to. Choke on the bone. So of course, since it's a danger, you're trying to like uh, put, put whatever fish in, in a spoon and then remove from uh, while it's like ready to be eaten. So you're allowed to, to, to remove these bones, uh, these bones from the spoon, well, from from the fork, from the fork, from the fish. Okay. So and that's uh, the same uh, with a person. So uh, so that's why we eat gefilte fish. That's why we eat chicken cutlets. Not uh, not the chicken itself, of course. Uh, no, not chicken. Not not the fish itself, right? Uh, fish cutlets, fish cutlets, gefilte fish. So why? Because there there, there is no there are no bones, and even though it's sometimes like fragment of bones, that they were like, uh, it's not uh, it's not dangerous. Okay. And uh, so the problem is, for example, she did all of these uh, two of them. So good from bad, meaning she, she separated the silverware, whatever she needed uh, and left over whatever she does not need it. And she uh, did it with a hand, meaning without special instrument, of course, silverware <laughs> with a hand, but she did not do it for immediate use. So immediate use is right before before the meal. What was right before the meal? Uh, and this, our sages say, right, right before the meal is like whatever time spent you need to prepare for the meal. So if you have, I don't know, 30 people, you have crazy party, big party, Ruch Hashem, you, your daughter is getting married, so you have all of these guests, your family is coming over, you have 30 people coming over. Okay, so to, for 30 people, you need to spend time uh, to, to prepare. I'm talking about women, right? So a woman would, uh, would take her three hours. 
at least three, three and a half hours minimum, right, to prepare for all of these beautiful dishes. So in this case, so your immediate use, uh, right, so immediate use would be these three and a half hours until people come. Right, but she cannot prepare and go to shul. If if she goes to shul, it's not for immediate use. So she would be guilty of uh, transgressing this melach of barer. That's an issue, right? So some people, that's what, uh, some women, that's what they do. They usually show up like a, a closer to the musaf. That's the problem. I mean, if she did not prepare in the house or she did not do any barer, there is no problem whatsoever. Let, let's say, let's say she had uh, everything in the refrigerator. And it's just salads, like uh, covered with a plastic, just take them out, put it on a the table, there is no problem. All, all the foods, like uh, whatever in the ch uh, cholent or soup, whatever is uh, cooking there, there is no problem. But if she did this barrer, that's a big problem. Even even though barrer is allowed, like uh, for example, she, she was peeling cucumbers, right? Or she was uh, peeling eggs, act of barrer. Um, next one, <laughs> very <chill>. Shabbos naps. <laughs> Many people have a practice to take uh, taking a nap on Shabbos afternoon. That's uh, the very enjoyable thing, right? This is included in the mitzvah enjoying Shabbos. So of course, we, uh, especially men must learn Torah. The Shabbos was uh, given us to learn Torah, right? You're not a, you're not going to work. You're not in a rush. You you have to, have to pay your bills. You don't have to answer your phone. This and that. So you have. Uh, you, uh, you you should have peace of mind and study Torah, right? But uh, on the other hand, you must enjoy. So take a short nap, have by yourself uh, the Shabbos uh, um, Shabbos alarm. So um, if you have a smartphone, you can buy just application, a few dollars, and that's it. Or buy a clock in a Judaica store. Right, and sleep uh, half an hour and uh, one hour, but don't sleep five hours. This includes the myths of enjoying Shabbos, so for men and for women. Uh, one is even allowed to go to sleep for the sole purpose of having, uh, having strength to stay up late Motsu Shabbos. I'm not sure why he's saying that. One is even allowed to go to sleep for the sole purpose of Having strength to stay Motsu Shabbos. However, one should not say that this is the reason to do so. Okay, exactly. Okay, so okay, that clarifies. Even if she is staying up for the purpose of the mitzvah, staying up for the purpose. Um, uh, so we, we have one one of the prohibition. What is the prohibition? We're not allowed to prepare on Shabbos for a weekday and on, on Yonta for a weekday. Uh, so if, for example, she she has a guest over or she goes somewhere, they go somewhere, so she said, yeah, we're going to stay up very late, so I want to take a nap on Shabbos. So, okay, if there is no problem taking a nap of Shabbos, but it, it must not be for a preparation for uh, for the things after Shabbos, even like, like this. We're not talking about other preparations, of course, but even such a thing uh, that uh, if she does not have uh, in mind, to, to prepare after Shabbat, there is no problem, enjoy. She wants to sleep three hours, maybe she will let her sleep three hours, no problem. Right? But don't say, I, I want to prepare for after Shabbos. This is because it is disrespectful for the, to the Shabbos to, uh, to say explicitly that one is preparing for after Shabbos. Like, I, I cannot wait until it's over, and now and finally I'm going to have uh, this, I, I, I'm going to go to... I don't know, to, to, to any place. If one does so, however, it's still permitted to go to sleep after the fact. So meaning meaning what? Like uh, still, since he, she's not doing anything like forbidden, right? Uh, she, she goes to sleep. So like uh, after the fact, uh, we actually allow her to go to sleep. Any questions? What we said? Okay, wow. So we stop here. Okay, any questions on any topic? There's some on the uh, on the chat. Okay, go ahead, please, please. After we do kiddush, are we allowed to drink the rest of the wine kiddush cup with the meal, or do we use a different glass? 
No, 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 you eat, uh, I'm sorry, eat, drink, drink as much as you can, want. Uh, and it's it's actually proper, so all, all of these things, just, uh, I, I, I think I, I said it, but, uh, so we, we're talking about minimum of the minimum, but uh, but proper, 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 to do the, the Kiddush uh, like on the, all of the highest standard, to, to drink all of the, the complete cup, and uh, usually a person who did Kiddush uh, the drinks from... Uh, uh, from uh, continue drinking the wine from this cup. There is no way it's it, it's not disrespect to the cup. No problem. What else? Are we allowed to eat breakfast like a cereal or a muffin on Shabbos morning before shul, or do we wait till when the no, rabbi no, says no, 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 the kids no, no. after service? Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow, wow. Wow. Okay. That's a good question. So as we as we said, um, even today we, we mentioned it's not allowed uh, for a person to to eat before davening. Like especially, it's very strict. Especially for a man, very strict. Why? Because uh, a man is obligated to daven when uh, when we say what is it with um, with a, with a dawn, whatever it's dawn, where the daybreak, but like before 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 the sunrise, then obligation comes up on, on the men uh, to to pray. On the women, not so much. So women women technically, there is no problem. A woman, if she wants to eat, there is no problem whatsoever. She can eat uh, before she davens uh, shachris. But for men, so and I'm just draw the parallel. So if he if he needs to to drink some water. Let him drink somewhere. If uh, he needs to to drink coffee, like coffee, but no more. Mizoinus for sure, for sure no. Okay. Mizoinus for sure no. I mean, unless unless a person, let's say elderly person, or he he's sick, she's sick, like a person is re recovering from from a disease. Yes, uh, just for for a person for purposes to to get the strength. Yeah, there is no problem there. But otherwise, uh, we don't eat before the dominant. And for women, so if she can uh, get, uh, like, uh, if she not, um, like, especially in Shabbos morning, since she's not going to work, she, like, unless she has, like, very busy schedule, so she's allowed to eat. But otherwise, preferable not to eat. Like, or eat, like, minimum of the minimum of the minimum, whatever you require. So if you, you can go buy with the only drink, or water, or tea, do that. Okay, what else? I'm a little confused. Hot food is recommended for Shabbos, uh, correct? How then can we have tea, coffee, or soup if liquids can be heated on Shabbos? Newer crock pots turn off automatically in 10 hours. Okay, okay, okay. So they. Yes, they're asking for shovels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so that that's why you buy like so what a urn, U R A R R N, like uh, whatever whatever depends on on the family, right? And it's uh, you 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 plug it in, um, and um, and you and it keep keeps the water hot, but you you're not doing anything automatically, and you you can drink as many cups of tea as you want. Or coffee, so there is, there is no problem. So that's that's where you get the hot water, and uh, just uh, just a little tip: if you're going to buy one, just uh, think like how big it must be, uh, so it would be enough for you for three days. So some sometimes we have uh, two days of uh, holidays and plus Shabbos. I mean, how often? Is it? Like some sometimes it's t twice or three times a year. Sometimes so maybe once a year. Right, so right, so buy buy as big as you need, and that's it. Don't, don't buy a smaller one. It's like uh, uh, like uh, the, it would be enough for one day. So maybe the guests are going to come. Maybe somebody wants to drink extra. Maybe you need uh, water for something else. So you you can use this water just so you know. So you can use this water like uh, to to wash something, right? Because it was like uh, uh, cooked before Shabbos, so that there is no problem. 
you can use this water to, to wash your baby, stuff like that, to, 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 to wash like with the warm water. You get hot water from this urn, uh, add cold water, mix it, and uh, you can use it for, for, for uh, things that you need. So technically, basically we have two, two things uh, plugged in on Shabbos. One, one is a hot plate, or, or if you have stove, gas stove, so you have black covered so you can uh, warm up the food whatever it's allowed to warm warm up and uh, you you have this uh, water uh, like uh, um, water urn with hot water two things what else <coughs> After so uh, uh, even even one minute after after a midday, so you you have to check. Uh, like, uh, I always recommend this uh, uh, application, Mysmanim, right? Mysmanim, that's a free free application. The the most in my in my opinion, the most reliable. Oh, I mean, maybe there are others, but uh, that's uh, I mean we, we've been using for many years in different countries, and it works uh, perfectly. Um, and uh, and you you check what is hot sauce, what is the midday in in your area. That's it. So uh, like one minute after hot sauce, you already fast fasting. So and especially in, the, in the, it depends where where you live. So in the, in the winter, as I said, it could be twelve, could be like a quarter to twelve. So the, the in, in some places they start nine forty five because they cannot uh, get these lazy lazy people to come. So that's uh, that's the problem. That's the places to avoid. You understand? So, okay. What else? So uh, I had another question about that. So after uh, Friday night Shabbos meal and stuff, and it's time to go to bed. In between those times, I mean, is that considered a, a fast? No, 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 okay, you, you, okay, so the, the fast is considered from, uh, um, uh, from, from, from the morning, which is from, uh, from, from, uh, daybreak until, until, uh, so, so it's not fast from, from, uh, from, uh, from early morning until the, the, uh, the, the noon, the six hours, according to, Halakhic hours, seasonal hours, Jewish hours, right? So it's not fast. So you, even if you if you don't eat or don't drink, but after that, it is uh, it is considered a fast. So some some people, as I know, they they learn uh, they, they 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 get up earlier, right? In um, uh, on Shabbos night, in it like I don't know, like three, four, five in the morning. And they, they continue learning. Of course, they, they can eat. There, there is no prohibition to eat, no prohibition to drink. There is no problem. Or if you if you did not eat, so there, there is no problem. So you you must eat before before the noon, right? So what before noon? Like five minutes before noon. If you do kiddush, it's good. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so, okay, go ahead, go ahead, please. Rabbi, so we're allowed to eat before, let's say, because you just said at 3, 4, or 5 o'clock in the morning, you're allowed to eat, uh, like, food, but what type of food? Okay, that's a, that's a good, good question. So I'm, I'm talking about, not, not Shabbos, I'm talking about in general. So let, let's talk about general. Um, so in general, so it says, um, our Shulchan Aruch says, do not start your meal, bread meal, uh, less than 30 minutes before the daybreak. Right? Why? Because at daybreak, you are, you're already obligated, obligated to start praying. You're going to pray, not going to pray, it's, it's irrelevant. Right? So, like, let's say daybreak. Let's say, I'm just making it up an example. It's 6 a.m., 
and my prayer starts at 8.30. So technically I, I have uh, like a few few hours before before I have to go to shul, right? But still, like, uh, so they say, if you want to eat bread, so start half an hour, like more than half an hour before. Why? Because you're going to eat and then you're going to say Birchat Hamazon, this and that. So, so meaning that you finish eating all of this food before before the um, before the daybreak. Dawn. So dawn is uh, much earlier than sunrise. Just so you know. Right. But other other foods like uh, there is no problem. So if uh, for example if you, if you uh, anyway even if you decided that okay you you woke up at 6 a.m. let's say right you 6 a.m. and you you start like uh, praying at 7 30 let's say you have still have time so uh, in, even though as we said you're allowed to drink coffee but it's proper before you drink coffee at least say the morning blessing at least say shema so meaning what that i, I put hashem first and only my needs uh, are my needs and they're going to come second okay but it's proper, as a Shulchan Aruch said, if it's pro if it's possible, possible for a person not to eat or drink anything at all, it would be preferable. Why is it preferable to make it like the idea? It's not to, like to for a person uh, to 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 suffer, but uh, uh, to be humble. So people like well, when they they ate a lot, like uh, like big meal, they, they start talking loud and this and that. It's, a, it's a very arrogant. But uh, a person who who is starving, not very arrogant. Of course, after the night, it's not like we start to starve, but uh, still makes a person humble, and it's he prays better, like he can ask for his sustenance much better than uh, somebody who just ate a piece of cake and he's not uh, not hungry. Understand? That's uh, that's the thing. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, uh, no problem. So we stop here, uh, and tomorrow we we'll continue with Kitzur Shulchan Thank you very much, and good night.